Alrighty guys, so welcome back. We're having a little bit of a look at Ghostface today. Now, right now, a lot of people are thinking this killer is unbalanced, unfair, and unreasonable. And I'm going to go into a couple of details as to why I think this killer is just a little bit above balanced. A lot of people have also been comparing Ghostface with Michael Myers. Personally, if I'm going to tell you the truth, I reckon Michael Myers is stronger for the mid to late game as opposed to Ghostface. Now, let's have a look at his ability first real quick. Okay, so he could do two things. He could actually crouch. Crouching does nothing in terms of reducing your heartbeat like the pig. What it does, it allows you to reduce your height, making a harder visual indicator for you to be seen, and it might, you know, stop a survivor from seeing you as well, which is kind of what I just said. Um, his other ability is he can enter Nightshade, uh, Night Shroud, sorry, uh, when the power gauge is full. So what he can do is he can press right click and he pulls his dagger up. This means he's now in stalk mode. In stalk mode, he has no heartbeat. He moves, I believe, a little bit slower. He can peek around a corner and look at a survivor. For lo the longer period of time he stares at a survivor, he gains the equivalent of stalk like Michael Myers. If he's peeking by default around a corner, it gives him more than peeking just standing in the open. All a survivor has to do is turn and face their body directly at Ghostface, and that'll break him out of the stalk. Now, if I'm stalking Jeff in front of me, Megan from my right-hand side can come up and stalk me from behind or look at me while I'm stalking, breaking me out. Therefore, I won't be able to use my power, and it will go on cooldown too. Now, to note a couple of things about Ghostface, if he stalks for the entire period of the time, he can actually M1 to cancel his ability, and if I have 99 stalked Jeff... Then when I walk up to Jeff next time, I can just tap Stalk, Stalk Jeff, down him straight away, like Michael Myers popping Tier 3. Depends on how you want to go about it. Me, personally, depending on how good the players I am versing, I will Stalk Jeff up to 99, I'll walk away, I'll M1 away to break the Stalk, I'll walk up to Jeff to M1 Jeff, and I'll let Jeff run off and heal and do his thing. Now I have permanent Tier 3 on Jeff, as long as I don't get broken out of Stalk with somebody else. It's just one of those things that takes a little bit of time and understanding to be able to use. Now before we go into perk details, um, with Ghost face you need to be facing him in the center of your screen your character must be perfectly looking at him it'll take about three seconds to break him out of it it'll be making a sound indicator while he's stalking you and when you're looking at him it'll be making a breakout sound as well notification uh, notification for him uh the thing about ghost face is he can peek a corner you can turn and look at him he can hide he can peek again and he can hide and he can keep doing that to get stalk out of you and you will not be able to break him out of it things to note about ghost face as well he can stalk over a picket fence on hattonfield the little white fence while crouched and not be broken out of it if somebody's on the opposite side of the fence which is really dumb he also the barbed wire fence on uh the preschool he can stalk straight through it and even if you're standing in the open staring straight back he'll still be able to stalk you through it as if there's collision but he'll be able to see you and you won't be able to break him out of it giving him his uh, ability to one hit down you as well keep in mind the ability will stay on you for a couple of seconds if he pops the tier three or the equivalent of tier three like michael myers it'll have about 30 seconds on you i don't know the exact time to be honest um and when he m1s you it'll disappear or if the timer expires, it'll disappear. However, if he 99 stalks you, he can leave you like that the entire game. And until he pops it and goes for the snowball, things to be mindful of. However, if he stalks one person a full, he can down him in one hit. Doesn't mean he can down another guy in one hit like Michael Myers can. So you can see similarities and differences here. They both have big on hit. He does have a 32 meter tear radius, but he can remove his tear radius with the click of his fingers. It does fade in and out. Um, keep in mind, if I'm right beside a generator with a survivor beside me and I hit, you know, no heartbeat, the heartbeat doesn't just disappear like old school Insidious, it'll fade out like Insidious does, or the pig crouching. Moving on to his add-ons, a lot of his add-ons are all about stalking, for example, his best ones here, you're looking at the aura of all survivors outside of your terror radius are revealed for you for 4 seconds when you mark a target and put them into dying stage. So this allows you to slug, if you're running this with something like knockout, you down one, but then again, you're just going to be able to go, cool, so I've got one guy in a Jenny there, two guys there, you might see guys close by, you might see guys far away, if they are in a locker, it does hide the aura. The next one here, ghost face caught on tape, allows him to stalk you like that, the click of the fingers, if he peeks a and he's getting the stalk you're done in about two to three seconds he'll have that stalk and it'll be right up behind you a good ghost face will be able to just wait for that prep and get you or if you're out in the open he'll just pop it get one or two pallets out of you then the m1 or if he gets good positioning and pathing through the pallets he'll just take that over downing you i will happily sacrifice a michael myers tier three for the four pallets in the middle of the map if i know i have generators placement around it it just depends on a lot of things i will not sacrifice a tier three myers to take two pallets near an exit gate with no generators done because one guy went over there unless he was on death hook 
and I had no other choice. Do you know what I mean? It depends on the play style of the game and how it's favoring. All of his other things will increase, like his um, crouching, how far away he can be, like crouching movement speed, how far away he can be and stalk you without you getting the sound indicator. They're all okay. So what is a good kit for this guy? Now, let's be real here. You kind of want to know where multiple survivors are at once. So barbecue and chili, if we look through his perks real quick, sorry guys. We've got I'm all ears, you have thrilling tremor, and you have futuristic chase. I'm all ears means when a survivor fast vaults a window, whether that be a medium or, or a full vault. Um, alongside if they have quick and quiet or don't. This will give you a sound notification and it will make them glow bright pink for six seconds and you know where they are. It has a 30 second cooldown at tier three. It's actually a pretty good perk for the nurse. If somebody fast forwards a window, you can see their aura for six seconds, allowing a precise M1 blink guaranteed if you're a half decent nurse. The next one's called Thrilling Tremor. Now, this is one of the best perks in Dead by Daylight as of this current video. Um, if I'm going to be real with you, this replaces barbecue and chili in every way but blood points. So basically, when you down a survivor, the second you pick them up, every generator that doesn't have a survivor on them will glow bright white and will seal by the entity and will not be able to be worked on or touched for the next 16 seconds. However, if a survivor was already on a generator, the generator will not seal white, revealing the location of where the survivor is on the generator. So... This stacks really fantastically well with Pop Goes the Weasel as an alternative to barbecue and pop. More reliable than relying on Ruin. I really do like Thrilling Tremor. It is my third favorite perk. If we're going to go through my top five real quick, you have Pop Goes the Weasel, Discordance, Thrilling Tremor, um, Infectious Fright, and Agitation would be my top five, followed by Make Your Choice. Very fantastic on people like the Billy as well with Pop Goes the Weasel. I'm currently running um, Pop Goes the Weasel, Enduring... Thrilling Tremor and Corrupt Intervention, which I substitute with Ruin if I see multiple toolboxes. So it's very, very powerful for the map pressure, the momentum, and it goes good hand-in-hand -hand with Pop, regardless, because Pop lasts one minute. It'll give you good situational awareness throughout the map. Moving on to the next perk, this is called Futuristic Chase. Now, this is a very hard-to-understand very hard to understand perk. So basically what it does is each token reduces your terror radius by four meters while in chase. So yes, monitor and abuse, when you start st uh, entering chase, it makes your heartbeat larger, but when you're outside of chase, it makes it shorter. So stacking this with monitor and abuse is not a good idea. They do opposites to each other. Keep in mind, people like Michael Myers who have a 16 meter heartbeat, monitor and abuse will make it an eight meter heartbeat. You do not need futuristic chase. If you had to choose this, realistically, you could use it on somebody like Leatherface, somebody who has an instant injure but no real movement potential through the map. It'd be a waste on somebody like the Billy. Basically, you become obsession. With, uh, you have one obsession, uh, and you, if you, elim sorry, eliminating your obsession one by one. When your obsession is hooked, you gain a perk or a token for this perk. So you have to tunnel down your obsession, much like Dying Light, to be able to get it to work. I do not like this perk at all. I think it's really bad. I think it encourages not the kind of gameplay. You shouldn't be looking at tunnel, tunnel, kill, kill. You should be looking more towards, okay, one on the hook, one in chase, one on the ground, one on a generator. I now have mass split pressure. You should try and divide it as much as you can. Um, it's furtive chase? My apology, not futuristic chase. My bad, I'm sorry. Um, moving on, guys, back to the build that I was recommending for him. Now, generally, there are four perks that I normally recommend in my killer games. I recommend something to slow down the game, something to speed up the game in your favor, something for situational awareness, and something to clutch the game. An example of that would be something to slow down the game. You have ruin, something to locate survivors. You have barbecue, something to um, help you clutch the game. You have make your choice, sloppy butcher, save the best for last, realistically, no one. And then something to... Uh, speed up the game in your favor. You got Enduring, Brutal, uh, Bamboozled, Realistically Fired Up, even though it's a bad choice. Now, I recommend a bit of a different build on this guy. As of the fact that base stun time has been reduced, um, I feel Enduring is good with it, but taking a pallet stun, that's okay. Depending on what rank you are, I would recommend two different builds. So, if I'm building a rank for... Uh, a rank 15 build right now, it is Season Reset, guys. So we got all the way back up to rank 10 here. I would put on Ruin. Uh, I'd look for mass situational awareness. This is for like a rank 15 player, rank 10 to 15. This is going to give you more blood points. It's going to allow you to locate where people are with stall in the game. You're probably going to want to look at something like Pop Goes the Weasel as well. Pop Goes the Weasel is going to help you out a wicked amount of uh, if you actually do get the hits out for it. And your final perk, realistically, Enduring or Brutal Strength would suit you better. I personally would pick Enduring. This is what I'd pick for a mediocre. I'm new to Ghostface. Obviously, if you don't have the teachables, you can't. But this is just what I feel would be good good for you if you didn't have a 100% grasp or understanding of this player. Now, if we're going to go up into the higher ranks, my build would change absolutely 
dramatically, okay? Now, depending on how confident you are, I recommend Corrupted uh, Intervention over Ruin. The reason I recommend Corrupted Intervention is it's what I can do in 1 minute and 20 seconds, as opposed to relying on luck with Ruin. Ruin could last 5 gens, Ruin could get broken in 10 seconds into the match. I don't like relying on RNG. However, if I see more than 2 toolboxes, I would replace Corrupted Intervention with Ruin in a heartbeat. I also run Thrilling Tremor to entwine this combo really well, hand in hand. So if we're going to quickly find Thrilling Tremor here, guys, just bear with me a second. It should be right here. Thrilling Tremor, great. This means the Jennies are sealed for 120 seconds, and if I time a pickup on that guy, Jennies are sealed for 136 seconds. That work cannot be done on the furthest three away Jennies. It's going to give me good situational awareness. Now I'm going to be looking at something to give me um, regression in the game too. So I'm going to be looking at Pop Goes a Weasel. Pop rewards me for being able to play well and what I can do and how hard I can work. If I can keep pressure on, I'm going to get it much more benefit than if I can't. Pop has won me a lot of games when it looks like it's all over due to the fact that it regresses 25% of a generator and lasts 60 seconds. Jenny takes 80 seconds to do at 79 seconds. Boom, you're going to take approximately 20 seconds off a generator. And then if he taps it and you get another hook on, boom, another 20. You just half that generator all the way back. It's going to save you a lot of, uh, you know, threat. Now this final perk, I would pick a little bit of a different thing to a lot of people in the audience. Brutal Strength is an option, Enduring is an option, it just depends on your playstyle. Having your tier 3, realistically I would pick Brutal over Enduring or the equivalent of your Stalk. However, I need to know where multiple people are, okay? Now this kind of does counterintuitive in terms of Thrilling Tremor. It does bounce a little bit. However, if I seal Jennies and then I see one Jenny flashing and one Jenny not flashing, I know where two players are and one player is. What direction am I going to run with my Pop Goes the Weasel? I'm obviously going to take the two players. If they're closer than the one player, the one player is to my left-hand side, I'll take the one. And if the two are in the far right-hand corner of the map, I'll let the two go. It just depends on the pathing of the map. This gives me so much game knowledge, will allow me to stalk and get as much as possible. I'll know where two people are, and if I have two people in front of me, that's one less player that can come up behind me and break me out of doing my stalk ability. It's going to give me more situation awareness and more rotation. Now, I'm not going to say this build's going to win you every single game as Ghostface, especially if you don't play with add-ons. If you put Ruin on, it'll probably help you out a lot at the start of the game, unless it gets broken. It depends on how good you are with the stalk, if you utilize it. Keep in mind, not having Brutal and Enduring, you're going to get punished if you respect every pallet. If you are smart and going, this pallet has a really damn good window round of the corner. I hit Megan and Megan won't take her eyes off me. Megan and probably has dead hard. I'm going to walk through this pallet because I want this pallet done and that is a really good window. Megan's going to go right through. Megan's going to try and do something cute, try and dead hard past you, then you M1 her. Or Megan's going to throw the pallet. If you were smarter though, you'd take rotation around and that way you cut the window off. Might take you one additional lap, but you're guaranteed to get the pallet. If it is a good pallet, don't hesitate to walk into it without enduring and break it. If it is a dodgy pallet, you can maybe bait it out very, very easily. Especially if you have lust, you can maybe even go for the lust hit on him depending on how much time you have. Not having ruin will hurt you in terms of split pressure, but you're at least going to have a little bit of time at the beginning of the game because survivors will always spawn far away from you regardless. Some might spawn close, but there will always be someone far away unless they played an offering to spawn together and they got the spawn close towards you. So just keep this in mind as well. This is going to help you out on a lot of maps. There are the maps like that one shape, like the Dumbbell on Auto Haven Wreckers. If you seal half the map, holy crap, the pressure you have for the first 120 seconds Anyone coming through the middle of the map, you can punish hard. If you hit them and they run to the area where the three Jennies are sealed, you let them go and you rotate, you path back around. Just be smart. Keeping in mind, sealing three Jennies at the start, most likely people are going to stack on the Jennies more, giving me more likely to pop Discordance. I feel this perk benefits really, really greatly. This is a fantastic build. In fact, I believe it. This is very close to my Plague build. There's only one perk difference, and that's Infectious Fright instead of Thrilling Tremor. Because this guy shouldn't be going for downs, he should be going from hook to trades. You could trade out Thrilling Tremor, but it's just going to give you more regression. And if you lose out on this, remember, once Corrupt Intervention is done, 120 seconds in the game, you have nothing to stall the game apart from pop and how good you are with your pathing. You're going to have Discordance to know where multiple people are, and this is going to allow you to down one of them, pick them up, good go straight for a kicker pop. It works hand in hand. I cannot see a better option. Enduring or Brutal would be good if you knew the guys were elite loopers. So would Bamboozled. But if you take good pathing, you'd be better off. That also being said, if you cannot get a hit or a pallet in 15 seconds, you are doing something wrong. You will have the equivalent of Bloodlust. You should take a pallet or a hit then and then rotate away unless you know they're running to a naked or an empty zone. If I'm running behind a Jake on Father's Chapel and he manages to vault a really good L wall into the shack in the lineup perfectly, 
I'm gonna leave him straight away. Unless I've chased him for 10 seconds and I have bloodlust in 5 seconds, I'm literally gonna just go, that looks way too painful. It's gonna cost me too much time. I don't have ruin. I don't have prep. I don't have any time to chase or commit to him with that unless he's on death hook. It's all, it's all about understanding and you're parthing through the map. The more people you have in chase, the more people you have down, chase, hooked, knowing where they are, the less work that can happen. And because it's very easy to gen rush the killer at this point in time, it's just one of those things you got to be paying attention to. So, alright guys, if I had to pick a map that would be the best for Ghostface, honest to god, it'd be pretty damn simple. It would be the game. Now, I know the game is small because Corrupt Intervention wouldn't really help you too much on the game in terms of spawning as far away from you as the generators, although Discordus would do a lot of damage. So, I'd probably trade off Corrupt for Ruin on the game. Uh, but I feel this build can work well on any map, whether it be Lyra Institute, you can hide your heartbeat. You can do a lot of damage and a lot of work with it. If you haven't given it a go, give it a go. Let me know what you think of it in the description below, guys. So that's all for the video. I'll see you guys next time.